Amen. Thank you for your kingdom. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who has given us life, who has given us eternity, who has given us hope. Thank you, Jehovah Lord, even for your word which you have given us. Oh, Father, it is so sweet to trust in you. It is so sweet to depend on you. It is so sweet to rely on you because in you, O oh Lord, we have eternity. In you, Jehovah Lord, we live forever. In you, we are forgiven. In you, we are redeemed. In you, we are given power. In you, we are given authority. In you, O oh Lord, we have been restored back to our original position and in you job our lord we live we move and we have our being in you oh father we are complete we bless your name tonight and we exhort you thank you for this opportunity you have given us once again as your people are called by your name that father we may dine at your table we thank you father because we know your one is alive your one is active you have always exalted your one above your name and in the entrance of your one oh father to bring light unto us thank you father for your one is a light unto our path and you are one oh lord is a lamb to our feet it. Job Lord, we thank you because we know you are going to speak to us tonight. Holy Spirit of God, we are ready to learn from you. We are ready to be corrected by you. We are ready to be rebuked by you. We are ready to be corrected of you. We are ready to grow and to become more of Jesus for the glory and the honor of your holy name. As we stand in the book of Ezekiel chapter 47, we pray that Job Lord, you are going to make us understand, O Lord, the purpose and the intent of your word, O Father. Be magnified and be exalted because you are our Lord. For I pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Yeah, our today is from the book. Our today's study comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47. We have been going through the Bible, chapter by chapter, book by book, one by book, as a family, and by grace of God, we are now in the book of Ezekiel. And today, we are focusing on chapter 47 of the book of Ezekiel, which is from verses 1 to 23. Ezekiel chapter 47 has two, two parts. The first part is the vision of the holy waters, their rise, their extent, their depth, their healing power, the plenty of the aquatic animals which were in, in that water, and an account of the trees growing on the banks of them. That is verses Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 1 to 12. Part 2 is an appointment of the borders of the land of Canaan, which was to be divided by lot to the tribes of Israel, and the strangers that went through Horoson Janon among them. So part two is dealing with the borders, the boundaries of the land of Canaan, which was to be divided by lot to the tribes of Israel, and the other strangers who were living among them and who, who, who went through them or who are living amongst them. From Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 13 to 23. Basically, this chapter uh, of Ezekiel chapter 47, it and, it, it and two parts. There is what is called in the prophecy, near fulfillment and the future fulfillment. This, this, the, this vision has not been fulfilled partly it will be fulfilled when christ returns and restores the jews to their promised land that will happen because god is faithful and he cannot uh, lie it was also fulfilled when they returned to their land remember at this time it is um it is it is 574 bc before christ when ezekiel is being given this prophecy and the land of Jerusalem has already been taken to captivity. In captivity. Ezekiel is also in captivity. But now the word of God comes to him. And is, he has been shown the way the temple would, would be. The new temple would be. Now he is being shown about the, the land. The way it will be. The boundaries by, by a vision which came from God. So the near fulfillment, it happened when they came back. From captivity but larger part of this vision it is future even today the time we are living now in our dispensation in this church age part it has already it has not been fulfilled but it will be fulfilled when christ return let me read after he brought me again unto the door afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house and the beyond waters issued out from under the threshold of the house east ones 
for the forefront of the house stood towards the east, and the waters came down from under from the right side of the house, at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the outer gate, by the way that looked eastwards, and beyond there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that and the line in his hand went forth eastwards, he measured a thousand cubic, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankle, that is northern depth. Again, he mentioned a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again, he mentioned a thousand and brought me through the waters to the loins. So you can see the depth is increasing. After, afterward, he mentioned a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, as thou seen this, then he brought me and caused me to, to return to the brink of the river. Now, when I, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the, o, o, on the one side and, and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out towards the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth will move wherever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because this water shall come there, there. For they shall be healed, and everything, that, and everything shall live where the river come. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from the Enigent even unto any Englahim. They shall be a place to spread forth nets, their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But the miry places thereof, and the, and, and the marishes thereof, shall not be healed, they shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not faint. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth the new fruit according to its month, because there are waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. So let us look at that scripture. From verse 1 to 12 because it is totally different what what the, that prophecy focuses is different from verse 13 to to the final verse so this is a vision and uh, it has aspiration meaning to us today the spiritual meaning cannot be applied to water directly the water, the water which was to be, of course, put in the in the pipes in the temple, and the sacrifices, to keep the to keep the temple clean and and for carrying the waste water from the temple, but it has got special implication. The as we are going to see. So uh, even in the book of Revelation, chapter twenty-two, verses one, John uh, himself. It says this, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, and proceeding out of the throne of God and from the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on the either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bear the twelve manners of fruit, and the yielded a fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more cast, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and all his servants shall serve him. So, from even the other scripture, you know, Bible interpret itself, we see that what has a meaning, it has express simplification. And we can learn the following, that uh, it represents the glory and the joy which we get through grace of God. The glory and the joy which we get through the grace of God. So it represents the grace and the joy which we begin. And many agree here that it signifies the gospel of Christ, the good news of Christ, 
which began from Jerusalem and it is spread from the uttermost world. We know after the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples who are left in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus already before he, after Jesus resurrected, before he ascended, he stayed with the disciples for 40 days and he told them not to tarry in Jerusalem, not to go anywhere until they are empowered. And we know now after the empowerment, they received the power or the gift of the Holy Spirit and from there now they started preaching the word of God and through that it spread throughout the world as we have it today. So that water, it can simplify that because through the Holy Spirit, the gospel began in Jerusalem and it spread all over. So that is the summary of that. So let us look at the, the content of it. We are told the river, the water rose. It was not stationary, it was, it was increasing. Verse 1 says, water is soon out from the dress owned of the house, east ones, and from under the right side of the house. That is the south side of the altar. And again, verse 2 says the same. So it means that uh, uh, the blessings of God began, began from Zion. Even you know Jesus himself came from, was born from the lineage of, of Judah. So th that is where the blessings of God began. The Spirit was poured upon the apostles, as they have said. And they all spoke with different tongues. Actually, so that all the people who were around them, they understood them. So in the temple, actually that is where they began speaking to preach the good news. As we see it in the book of Acts chapter 5, verse 20. Go stand and speak in the temple to the people, all the ones of life. So, you can see it clearly sim simplifies that Christ is the temple and he is the door. From Christ we get the living water. And when Jesus came, he talked about the water. He said that uh, he said that in John chapter 4 verse 14, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him aware of water springing up into everlasting life. This is of course in the context where he was spoken to this Samaritan woman. So Christ is the source of living water. Again in the book of John chapter 7 verse 38 he said that He that believe on me as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of his Holy Spirit. Which, which they that believed on him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given. So, this word, the word also signifies the, 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 the Holy Spirit, which Jesus gave. So, this water, we are told that uh, was not above the ground, but it, is, it, is, it came from the, the fountain. And this refers to Christ. Colossians 3, 3 says this, For all of you are an, were undent, and your life was in with Christ. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then you shall all of you also appear with him in glory. So, so the, this water, what it does is that uh, it makes the dead sinners alive. Because you know, of course, wherever there is water, the water brings life. The dead, the, uh, it makes the dead sinners to come back to, to life. So it can also refer to the wisdom. To the wisdom which is God in the word of God. In God's, in God's words there is wisdom. The gate can be referred to that. The doors can be referred to that. Actually in the book of Proverbs it talks of the wisdom. The, the, we, we are told to get wisdom. To get understanding. The word of God of course. This water also can, can refers to the comfort and the grace that we get from, from God. Because from, from God's word we get light and we get life. Psalms chapter 119 verse 30 says, in, in the, the, the entrance of, the, of, the, of God's word, the entrance of your words give light. It gives the understanding unto the simple. So when the word of God comes, it illuminates our life and we are able to, to see where we are not seeing. We are able to understand where we are not understanding. Where we are going astray, we are able to understand. The, so uh, this word, we as the saint of God, 
Those who have believed in Jesus will get joy. We are glorified from this water. And we are happy when we have this water. When we have the word of God, when we have the grace of God, when we have the Holy Spirit, we are comforted. We are comforted by it. Now, the other part it is the progress and the increase of, of these waters. The water increased. It, it went forth east once towards the east country. So the prophet here is guided to follow the stream as it ran down from the holy mountain. And as it ran, it was increasing. The water kept on increasing. So as he walked along on the bank of the river, on the other side, as thou said cubic, the water kept on increasing in in depth. As they walked a thousand cubic, the water kept on increasing. So what what does that one refer to us today? Or what was it simplifying? What 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 what, what does this symbol of the water increasing as they moved along mean to us as the believers? So the waters of the sanctuary are running waters as those of the of Wariba, not standing waters. So the gospel was preached. So let us see five things which we can learn today as believers concerning the water, the way it increased as the prophet moved a thousand cubic. One thing which we, we learn is that uh, when, the, when, the, when the gospel was preached, it, it, it started spreading. Initially, it began in a, at a small scale, but it kept on increasing. The disciples started when they were very few, but the word of God kept on increasing and spreading. So that is what happens even today. The grace in the soul of a person keep on being, it is an active thing. It is something which keep on growing until we are perfected. Number two, uh, they are increasing waters. The, the rivers kept on increasing constantly. So the church, even Jesus compared the church like a master and the kingdom of God like a master and a sin. It keeps on growing. Initially, the things of God might be despised. The things of, of God, even in somebody's life, people may not really recognize them. But the kingdom of God is a kingdom which is growing. The things of God are the things which are growing. So the church, the gospel, it is something which is small in the beginning, but it keeps on growing. It grows it until it becomes to that level. Even the gift of the Holy Spirit, they keep on increasing in somebody's life as we keep on exercising them. Let's say, for instance, you are not loving, and you understand that God is love. Love, of course, is one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The more you exercise love in your life, the more it becomes part of your life. If you are not patient with others, the more you exercise patience, of course, in order for you to exercise patience, there must be something which requires you know, to, to, to exercise that fruit. If you are doing self-control over things, over your life, you keep on, on exercising it. So that is how the things of God are. They keep on growing. Or just like the way in the morning you see the sun shining, initially it is dim, but as the sun keeps on setting, it becomes bright and bright until now the day is there for you, for you and for me. Number three, it is good for us to follow these waters and go along with them. We see that the, the prophet went along the river, observing what the guidance he was given. So the progress, today, today the, the, the work of God is on progress. The work of God keeps on increasing. The Holy Spirit is working through people. So even you and me, we should be always under the divine guidance of God. We should not go ahead of God. We should not be behind of God. We should go together with Him, guiding our steps day by day. In everything that we take in our life, in every decision that we make, we should be with Him. Actually co-working with our Father so that our life can be meaningful. And number four, it is going to be searching into the things of God trying to get in depth of them, trying to understand through the help of the Holy Spirit. We should not be contented. That is when Jesus taught and said, we seek Him. We seek the kingdom of God. So the more we seek the things of God, the more they are revealed to us. Because what God has kept for His people, no eye has seen, no ears, and what God has kept for those who love Him. 
even in the science world, the, 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 the innovations which have been made in the in 21st century, those things were there, but people are not discovering them. The technologies we have today, but it is not they have been revealed to, to us. And there is much more in the house of God or in this universe which God is storing for his people. So we should do that. We should not be contented, but we should keep on being with our Father so that he can renew much more to us which he has kept. And number five, when we search the things of God, we are going to find them very plain. We are going to understand them easily when, when we are interested. We are going to understand. They will not be difficult. You know that some people see the things of God being very difficult. They are not. The closer we draw to God, the more we are going to understand what is required of us. And we are going to enjoy the fellowship because actually we are, we are created for the fellowship. That is one of the purposes as to why we were created because we are going to get our wisdom from there. So that is what we can learn concerning the water increasing in size and from, from one step to another until the prophet was not able to cross the river. Now the other thing we are seeing here it is the extent of the river. The river moved towards the east country and it was uh, and, and after that it, it was divided into several streams. So uh, uh, up all the way to the descent, actually we are told all the way to the descent, it went either into the Dendi Sea, Dendi Sea or into the Sea of, of Tiberias. So there it is not clear. But now, our take which we can take there, it is the way the word of God is spread into the whole world. We are told that in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 8, verse 1, And the soul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered and brought throughout the rivers of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So, when persecution rose, just like the way this river spread, the gospel of God, these people are scattered into the uttermost world. And as they went, they were preaching Christ. If you can stand in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 8, wherever they went, they went with the word. Now, we are also learning that this river was the healing virtue of the river, the waters of the sanctuary. Wherever they come and wherever they go, there is freedom. There is wonderful blessing which is found in this water. So there is divine, divine healing. That is what we, we are told. So this water was sweet. It brought life. So the word of God, when it is spoken, when it is received, it brings life. Where there is no hope, it brings hope. Where there is no peace, it brings peace for those who believe in it. Even during the time of Elisha, there was a case. Maybe I can read it in just two scriptures. Verses Second Kings chapter 2. Verses 20. And they said, Bring me a new crash, and they put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and they cast the salt in there. And they said, Thus says the Lord, I have owned these waters, there shall not be from henceforth any more death or unbearing land. So, so the waters were hewn unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha. So when the word of God is spoken, you see here, uh, Elisha spoke the word of God. It brings life. It brings restoration. If, they have, if there is a life of a person which had no hope, which was dead, a family which was dead, a vision which was dead, and the, the word of God is received, it brings that resurrection. So the word of God is a creative one. It resurrects life. It resurrects hope. And that is what we are learning today. That is why we should embrace it, the word of God. Because in it, there is life. So the other thing we are learning is the great plenty of fish that were found in this living water. We are told that there, there were a lot, a lot of fish which were found there. And they were increasing in number. Every kind was there. The multitude of fish of all kinds were in this river. So what does that apply to us today as believers? What does it, does it have any any implication to us as people who have faith in God, as people who are living in the new dispensation? The answer is yes. So there are some great believers in the whole world 
who are always multiplying. God is saving people. God is drawing people to himself mm -hmm. all the time. So we are not alone. God has many, many in his kingdom who are multiplying. From generation to generation, God has kept his people. And even now, when we think maybe the evil is winning, actually the evil appear to be winning, but the evil will never win. God is still saving his people. God is, is drawing his people to himself. As Jesus taught and he said that no one can come to the Father unless he is drawn by him to himself. So God is drawing people to himself even now. I mean, these are the many challenges we are facing. God is there through the word. So, as the word, we, we keep, as we keep on hearing the word, the word of God has that power of drawing people to himself. James chapter 1 verse 18 says, Of his own will brings forth he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. So it is God who drew us to himself. Actually, God loved you and me. You could not really have loved yourself. As First Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says, First Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible sin, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So when we hear the word of God, we get this new birth. By the word of God. And the word of God lives forever. So we thank God for, for his word. Which is saving his people. We should be encouraged as believers today. Because the word of God is growing. Many people are coming to the knowledge of God. Many people are recognizing that without God they cannot make it. Because you are not meant to live without him. Actually when we are disconnected from our creator. Then we have no life. And finally we have the trees. That were on the banks of this river. We are told there were many trees which were there. And these trees were prospering. They were producing their, their fruit at their season. They were not drying. They were, they, they were yielding their fruit. So Christians are supposed to be like these trees. We should bring the, fr the fruit of righteousness. We should bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Because we are planted by the river. When we are connected to Christ... When we are grafted into Christ, our life can never dry. Always we bring forth the, the fruit. As we, we bear fruit all the time, when we remain rooted in Him, the condition is we remain rooted in Christ. We remain in, with union in Him. Colossians 2 7 says that uh, rooted and built up in Him, Him we are referred to Christ, and established in faith, as all of you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So not just believing. In Christ, but remaining there, being built, being established, being rooted. And when we do that, we are going to continue bearing our fruit in season. And we will never go dry. So that is what God requires of you and me. There, there are these other trees which were planted on the on the salt. These trees, we are told, they, they, they will defend our way. So people who have rejected Christ... Their life fade away. Their life has no meaning. They don't get any life. Their life is always dry, regardless of what they could have materially. They don't have. They don't get any meaning for life. So blessed are those who believe. Blessed are those who remain connected and rooted in their their Father, in their in their Father, who through whom we get our our nutrient to continue. The last part it is about the boundaries of the land. This part I will read. That says the Lord God from verse 13. This, this shall be the border whereby you shall inherit the land according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions and you shall inherit it. One as well as another concerning the which I lifted up my hand to give it unto your fathers. And this land shall fall unto you for the inheritance. And this shall be the border of the land towards the north side from the great sea. The way of Edlon as men go to Zendad. A month, Berotha, Sibraim, which is between the border of Damascus and the border of a month, Azarikon, which is by the coast of Uran. And the border from the sea shall be Azaran, and the border of Damascus and the north one, and the border of a month. And this is the north side. And the east side you shall measure from Uran. And from Damascus, and from Gilead, and from the land of Israel by Jordan. 
from the border unto the east sea and this is the east side and the south side south ones from tama even to the waters of strife in kandesh the river to the great sea and this is the south side southward the west side also shall be the great sea from the border till a man come over against a man this is the west side so shall you divide this land unto you according to the tribes of israel and it shall come to pass that you shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you and to the strangers that sojourn among you which shall be get children among you and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of israel they shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of israel and it shall come to pass that in that in that tribe the stranger sojourneth there shall you give him his inheritance says the lord god so this message about israel being given the land or in the in captivity they are in the land of captivity so it was, it was very important to them very encouraging to them when this message came to them because at this point they had given up they had thought that god had failed to keep his promise so this prophecy was meant to encourage them and it was to do with, with with them and even today of course we know in in 1948 and 49 uh, israel from the, this time actually up to 1948 and this is 574 bc as i have said up to 1948 and 49 when the new land of israel was formed is the jews have been scattered all over the world but the but at that time now the new country was formed which has never happened to any any other community as historians know so we see god keeps his word but again this prophecy has not been fully been fulfilled it will be fulfilled this is a prophecy a future prophecy for the jews and god is going to fulfill it god will fulfill it at his time so the land of canaan here is secured for inheritance and we are seeing the borders being given remember this is a vision but now god knows the end god is all that powerful he declares the end from the very beginning actually we have been learning and we have seen that in in the kingdom of god there is no crisis and there is no emergencies nothing really, really which been get god and he is surprised that uh, this thing has happened nothing at all in the kingdom of god everything is predetermined he knows the end from the very beginning so that is why he is giving his servant this vision and uh, it is as if it has uh, happened or it is happening now but it is something which had not happened so we here now we are seeing about in god's providences these are wonderful promises to his people so god is always mindful of his covenant god does not break his covenant god always keeps his covenant any promise he makes he keep it and because god is always consistent to his word god does never break god can never break his word because god and his word is the same thing whatever god says that is him so god is faithful to keeping his promise he and promised and this covenant you would keep it as he and given in the book of numbers he and given them this land and all the boundaries are described here so uh, the dividing of the land all the tribes as he and promised the two tribes of joseph both manasseh and uh, ephraim they would be given the land remember the levite were not given any land because uh, they were to minister but now joseph who had two sons to sub the tribe of course remain 12 because it is 13 minus 1 the levite who are not given inheritance because god and declared that he will be ex inheritance so today now and 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 what we are seeing here is that each person was given equal share of the land regardless of the number and even in the new testament we see that uh, the twelve tribes are given equal share so we see god is impartial god does not have any any partiality god is just 
So in the kingdom of God, there is no difference between male or female, between Jew or Gentile. All of us, we are free in Christ. When we come to Christ, we are welcomed. We become partakers of divine nature. We become partakers of God's blessings. Even the strangers, we are told that the strangers who sojourn among them, they were to, and they get children with them, they were to be given the land, the inheritance. This is, so in God, even people who don't believe, when they believe in Jesus, they become part of the blessings. Mm. They are no longer strangers. They, are, they have that right. Actually, Jesus taught and he said, as many as believed in him, he gave them the power, the right to become children of God. So today, if somebody hears the word of God and you believe, regardless of what you have been doing, you are given that right, you are given that power to overcome the evil one and now to become a child of God and to start enjoying the blessings of your Father who is always willing to save each and every one of us. Actually, the Bible declares in this book we have been learning, the book of Ezekiel, that God does not delight in the death of the wicked, but in desires that the wicked turn away from their wickedness and they come to him. And that is why God gave himself so that in him we may live and in him we may move and in him we may have being. When Christ, when Jesus was dying on the cross, the curtain broke. The curtain of the, of the sanctuary broke. And that was, a, was to indicate that there was no difference between Gentiles and the Jews. So that body which was there was broken. So today there is no dis discrimination. What matters, what is important is this Christ in a life of a person who is the hope of glory. Romans chapter 10 verse 12 says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Romans 10 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich and to all that call upon him. So our God is rich. He has everything. When you call upon him, regardless of your backing ground, regardless of your color, regardless of where you are born, you call upon him, then he is going to save you. But that in the same for whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And finally, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16 says, But now they were the desired and better country, that is an heavenly, where God is not ashamed to be called the God, for he has prepared for them a city. So God is not ashamed to be called our Father. So today, there is no God for Jews and there is no God for Gentiles. We have one God, we have one Savior, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Isaiah 56, verse 3 says, Neither let the son of the stranger that he has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am and right tree. So God here is declaring that uh, when you are connected to him, when you have joined yourself to the Lord, there is no, there is nothing else. You, need, you don't need any other argument. Just as that singer sang that, we need no other argument. We need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. So it doesn't matter your past. What matters it is what Christ did for you and you have earned it and you have believed. So may God bless us and keep us. My prayer is that God will help us that we may continue to live in his abundance blessings whereby we have been bought with their price and the price which has bought us it cannot be corrupted. We are as we are accepted in the Father now. We are we are sons. Everything that the Father has belongs to us and we get them through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life to the Father. So, may God help us to believe and to remain in Him, rooted and established in Him through faith all the days of our life. And this is only possible by the grace of God and by the help of the Holy Spirit, who is always with us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, and to be there as our advocate and even as our inter and even to, to intercede for us. God bless us. Memory verse, Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 9. Uh, where the river flows, everything will live.